It's a real pleasure to be here and um, I have a, a very a different way of delivering the talk. As you can see, there's an entire setup done in office studio type in my office. And it's for a very simple reason, is that a lot of content of this presentation or the talk of mine are more animated, uh, more visual. Uh, there's hardly any text that you'll see in this entire thing. Uh, so it's very engaging. I have uh, delivered over 140 plus talks so far and I love the one-to-one -one meetings. But uh, this is something which we are now so much used to it and we have to adopt to it. So I still feel that we will create a kind of unleashed experience uh, with the audience that we have. So let's start. Uh, thanks for inviting me to be Tata Services. I'll start with uh, naming this uh, you know, talk called as a connected billion. And uh, that's the smart solutions for increasing the return on investment. And the reason I say that of being connected billion is specifically because by 2025, we will have over 50 billion devices which will be connected with each other, devices which are going to talk to each other. I remember in 2016, I delivered one of my keynotes at the PMI National Convention in Mumbai on IoT. And at that time, I had made some presumptions and I had projected certain things happening in 2020. Eventually, they have just scooped and scaled up. I have one slide of that which I'll surely show you as to how it is connected to an SME segment in India. But before I get into my slide deck, uh, very, very interesting. This is the second week of February. And something very interesting happened. If you are a Formula One uh, race car uh, fan or if you are into supercars, uh, and if you have really seen the recent race which was there, they do not. Uh, this is the 1994, same same week of February, but 1994, and this is the race which was there. This was a crash that happened. So this is a practice session crash. This guy is Neil Bonnet. Neil Bonnet, as you know, is a legend. He was a legend in sports car. And this entire accident happened because of one small mistake, a shock mount. A shock mount costing $3 was not replaced by the mechanics. $3 shock mount not replaced. An accident was witnessed by the audience and Neil Bonnet, who you see on the screen right now. I'm not going to see at my slides, so I can focus and look at you, so I hope I'm synchronizing with my slides. Uh, Neil Bonnet died of that. Now this is 1994. Now the same week, four days back, there was again a Daytona event of another So you can see here, this is the 14th yes. car that has 16 cars crashed on each other. Here's the interesting part. Not a single driver was even scratched. Now what does this tell you? Is it about the cars? Is it about the drivers? Is it about the track? It's the same track. It tells you one simple thing. What Matt Harris, the CIO of uh, Mercedes sports car said. It's all about data analytics. If in 1994 the data would have been acquired and they would have understood that the shock mount would break at a particular cycle, they would have replaced it. Now the same thing today, sports cars, car races are more than about mechanical. They are about software technologies. They are about data. They are about analysis, failures. Everything that you can think of today, right from a sports car, to a Devdas movie, you know, most of my talks are so intricate, I just shift between topics and logics. This is a Devdas which was released in 1935. Um, I think Purusha Sahagal was a hero, this was based on a model. The same Devdas which was released in uh, 1956 somewhere where Dilip Kumar Saab was there. Uh, very, very famous movie which happened in that year, almost all films were once there one. And this is the Devdas of uh, the 1990s, where you had Shah Rukh and two beautiful uh, lady actors. Now what's the difference? The novel is the same, but the way Devdas has been presented in these movies 
the way the story has been presented is so different. If you are still continuing to do your business as what you were doing way back, 30 years back, 20 years back, 10 years back, and let me tell you, even 5 years back, one day, very surely, if you are not good at all, you will have a devdas of your own business or your will also very, very soon. Sorry to say that, but that's a fact. We live in a world with about 7.8 billion people. It's a very intricate world. Last year, you know, the pandemic has taken everyone on this planet by storm. But what's important is this slide. If you see, this is a self-explanatory slide. In 1820, if you see the economics, India was the number two economy in the global world. You know, 2,800 years back, we had one of the best universities, Takshashila, Nalanda. And now, we are just emerging. And by 2050, we should be in three. Why? Why do you think what's going to change? And one of the key things which is going to change or which is going to bring that particular change is the internet. It's been 25 years that the internet is here and India is adopting like never before. And most important is because of the SME segments, the MSME segments. So if you see here the micro segments, the SME segments, you can see we consume about 63 million businesses a year, recruiting over 110 million people. And this is what the entire talk would be, just next 10 minutes, whatever is left. What you are going to do tomorrow is going to be a minimalistic operation with maximum value. If you continue to operate your CNC machines in the same way, without connecting them, and independently working with FANU controllers and Siemens controllers, are not, they are not talking to each other. If you continue to do your healthcare the same way, your traffic the same way, your city is the same way, you are still going to add less value. What we need is long-term value with short-term gains. And in my next slide, I'll make it very clear. Because we are now from urbanization, we are moving to uberization. What do I mean by this? There are 10,000 people, 10,000 people every day shifting from villages to cities all around the globe. 10,000 people. What are they looking for? They're looking for a lifestyle, they're looking for a job. Today's world of global economy is where you have infrastructure developed in the rural areas, in the cities. Because this is what is going to happen. Over 50 billion devices getting connected with each other, talking to each other. This is the Gartner hype cycle of 2011. Why I'm showing you this is very important. This is 2011. Okay, IoT, as you can see, was there right over there. 3D printing was there. Cloud computing was there. Same thing in 2012. Same thing in 2013, 2014. And IoT, McKinsey Global Institute talked. The Goldman Sachs talked about it. The Forbes talked about it. 2016, we have some new technologies, emerging new technologies. We are talking of artificial intelligence, machine learning, augmented reality, virtual reality, natural language of processing. And this is 2020. What does this all imply on a simple SME? I will give you one example as I want. But what is important for us to know as to why we are talking this today? There are four major reasons, friends. Why today we are talking of smart solutions, digital transformation, why we are talking of artificial intelligence, machine learning, rapid prototyping, 3D printing, you just name it. What are these technologies talk today in 2021 and how SMEs are going to benefit it? I am sure the panelists are going to talk much more on the tech part of it and tech. So I'll just create a kind of a macro level around that so they can continue from there. If you see the core digital capacity of computing, you know, it's gone, if you see over here, from 15,540 per maps to about 1.2 rupees. You know, the India's first supercomputer was Param. Now, this is not very, very interactive because I have just less time, so I can't take your uh, Q&As right now. But if I ask you what would be the processing power of Param, you would still be not able to answer that at this stage. The processing power of Param was 5 gigaflops. 5 gigaflops. We're talking of the 1988s. Okay, and if any one of you has a Samsung mobile, Samsung S8 and above, the processing power of that mobile phone is 162 gigaflops. Now see how big computing is. So what you hold on your hands right now is more powerful than the first supercomputer in India. Second is the capability of the storage. What is storage? You used to pay a huge amount of money way back in 1992. Today it is almost free. You have Box, you have Google Drive, uh, 15 GB is free. You can just have 
very, very less cost for the storage. Most important, the bandwidth. Now, this is the game changer. People are talking about 5G coming in India and 6G and whatever it is. 5G would come somewhere in the next half of the year. What are we going to do with 5G when 4G itself is not really implicated? 4G itself is not really leveraged still in India. But whatever it can do, it is it will reduce the cost. The fact that in the February of 2021, we are making this webinar a live webinar. We are consuming 3 GB of data. And so yet, you are getting absolutely clear streaming. I believe so. Without any hitches or any clips. The reason is bandwidth. And because of all these three factors, the fourth factor, the IP has changed from IPv4 to IPv6. So every, every product, everything that is connected has got an IP bandwidth. And this is the kind of data that today we are delivering every day. An average internet user would give about 1.5 gigabytes of data per day. 3 terabytes. Your car has about 12,000 sensors and it's giving about 1 TB of data per year. Now this is absolutely phenomenal. But here's the best part. What we are going to do or what SMEs and MSMEs are striving for doing or what they are going to do is look at three important facts because of COVID, the whole philosophy has changed, the business models have changed. It's the internet of behaviors, it's the total experience strategy and the privacy enhancing computers. Today, if you go to a banking site and if you open the chatbots on Instagram, only 90% of your problems are already solved in that chatbot because they understand intelligence, it's AI based. It's an experience strategy. The internet of behaviors, I'll tell you what, we did a use case. So I have three companies. One is Model Cam Technologies Private Limited, and we help in digital transformation for past 18 years. Uh, we are partners with PTC, uh, which is a $2.5 billion company based in Boston. And we have over 750 customers in SME. I can talk of SME with authenticity because I've worked with them for 18 years. I'll tell you a very simple example. Forget the manufacturing part. I have a person who stays uh, this right about two kilometers from my place. He owns a medical shop. A medical shop fellow who is not even probably you know a super graduate or tech person. And he spoke to me one day, he's a Marwari guy. He spoke to me and he said, Amit Bhai, he gave karne ka technology use karne ka. And I was shocked. I said, I will you use technology for a medical aid? And then I got to something, and today what he is doing, I'll tell you an example. He has put beacons, we have put beacons, um, 20 meters, 10 meters, 15 meters, we have just put them across. And what we are doing with these beacons is so when someone is traveling to that medical shop, they get a beep on their mobile phone and SMS. 5% discount, 10% discount, this, this thing, that, that thing. And guess what? We also have put sensors to understand out of his entire flow, out of his entire stretch of uh, the dash out of there, how many people are standing where. So he deploys the number of people to look at it that way. Now can't that be used for smart trafficking system? We are standing somewhere in the traffic. It's a huge line and there's a signal on the other side. There are no cars or no vehicles and they're, and they're still giving a green. If we can have this smart lightning, smart traffic, just imagine where we can go with just one small thing. We can do smart city integrations with that. This is just an example of internet of behaviors. Second is location independence. Because of COVID now, we are more interested where we are. You know, I used to go uh, to Delhi and Bangalore and out of India many times to deliver the talks. It was a great experience, I said. But today, let's say B2B had called me and they said, okay, can you give this, can you look for it? I said, okay, fine, let's get And I created this entire setup in my office. So anywhere operations is the key for your business. But anywhere operations creates a challenge about cybersecurity. And I hope the panelists will take that in their talk. And the cybersecurity mesh. And the last but not the least, whether it is a pandemic, whether it is not a pandemic, Every company or small business needs to have a resilient delivery model. And that's AI engineering for you. That's hyper automation. If you're not automating the smallest of the things, you're out of business. Because every small business is no more about business being small. It's about algorithm business. It's about digital business. And when I say digital, it also means connecting your customers, your suppliers, your employees, your stakeholders, your, your everything that's connected to your business, if you're not connected today, whether it might be with cloud, it might be social, you're missing out on a chance. So today's the day to start in case you're not. Because digital transformation enablers 
are into four different processes. One is a process, other is insights, integration, and plot formulation. And all this constitutes on analytics, mobility, big data. And this is a very big topic. I can, if you know that you know, I deliver the talk for 45 minutes only on IoT. Today I'm just creating an entire scope and giving you a gamut of it. It's IoT. But I hope I'm able to cover certain points and most of the points which I'm trying to play in smart solutions. This is going to be the challenge, friends, when you go for smart solutions for manufacturing industries or healthcare. India has over 63 uh, million MSNs. 50% of those are major, the constitute, the, those who contribute to the GDP are into the engineering and services segments, that is IT. And there's a big chasm, if you see, very big gap between when they are the early adopters and when they are the early adopters. Because there are three challenges in adopting a technology. Whether it might be uh, a very simple technology like a customer relationship management tool that you can do. Or a digital tool for business, putting, it there, uh, putting a business on Google, let's say, or Google My Business. There are three common things. One is there is no standardization today, yet. That's a big challenge. Two is the data security. But most important, it's the mindset that the CIOs and should really tell the CEOs as advisors, counselors, as consultants to the companies to invest in digital technology. And if you want to really beat the competition, however small you are, even your small like that medical uh, you know, shop which I told you, internet of things, cyber security and cloud, and entire gamut is there entire, but I don't have the time for that. So what I'm going to do is explain to you in short about this particular operation. This is an unarmed, unmanned mining vehicle over 9,000 tons, driverless, operating in Africa, doing mining, controlled from Adelaide with sensors. Oh, blowing it Just up. And it's such a relentless, enormous and dangerous job that taking humans out of the loop makes a lot of sense. Here on its Hope 4 Iron Ore Mine, Rio Tinto was one of the first to introduce a fleet of trucks which are both enormous and autonomous. Autonomous, you could say. It is incredible to think. So these no. are all manless trucks, this. all with a thousand percent sensors. You can see that. That's quite scary for quite scary thing to see going back to operator. Yeah, so I was, I was definitely skeptical. Uh, if you're going to be out there with nobody in control. So I can give you many such examples, but there's just one for that. Cancer in healthcare, you know, cancer is detected, you know, when, when, we, have a, when we have a heart attack, when you detect a heart attack, 50% of the time you detect a heart attack, when a person dies, that's what he had his first. Now what if the cells are detected at 150 million and you detect it at that level? Just by pin, sensors, healthcare. Companies today are like this character, what I can say. He's one of my favorite characters when I was in school. It's called his Phantom. He keeps on bitting and there's a punch and a mark that comes on his car. Companies are today pushing their products and services and what we do and what won't we do and everything. But if you're not going to adopt and push yourself, business is not going to be resilient. What you need to do is fight a man. Because one day, a Phantom will do something like this. This is your customer win. You guess what it is. But one day, you will be like a Spider Man. Entire connections of web, in this case, it's data. As simple as that. Data to analyze, data to query. Thank you very much. It's exactly 3.19. I have already committed to Gautam. I always close one minute before my talk. So thank you. It's been a pleasing pleasure to be here. And thanks for the opportunity. And we'll be Gautam, uh, Ashish, and all the other guys. Thank you very much.